Um, I prophesy right now that today is a day of the fourth day. Today is a day of establishment. Today is a day of fulfillment. And that's why we can't lose heart because today is a day of fulfillment. And starting Wednesday, we're going to go to a higher level. A higher level of what we experienced so far. It's going to go to a higher level than we experienced so far. This is not a four-day thing. This is a four-day season that we had to equip us and to get us moving and to have a breakthrough so that we can do great things coming this Wednesday, starting off, that we're going to have the breakthrough. So this is not nearly the end of what God is doing. This is a small beginning of what God is doing and the big things he's doing. So almost say, watch for it. It's going to increase and increase and increase starting after today. It has increased already. We saw an amazing night on Wednesday night, and Friday night was a huge night. God's doing great things. God is releasing. And I never, ever seem to be so certain about what God is doing until lately. It's so certain that God is moving forward in a miraculous way. We're breaking through walls. We're breaking through a lot of things. And the Lord is moving forward. And we're seeing people reach out for this power and this anointing and this love that is represented in Christ Jesus. It is happening. You've got to know. Today is the fourth day of the tent meeting, or, or, or whatever you want to call it. The fourth day that God said, today is the end of this day. But it's a, when there's a closed door of something, there's a new door open again. How many know that when you go from winter to spring, the seasons overlap? Sometimes you still have snow in spring. Sometimes you, still ha sometimes you don't have snow in winter, but it overlaps itself. It never, they work together. And so every season in God works together. There's no ending ever, and there's no stop of what God is doing ever. It is always a new season that blends into the last season. We, everything we did, these last four services, doesn't end. It just blends into the next season, and it increases the next season, and it gets us ready for the next season. Every season blends. It never, ever quits. Your season in life, your season of healing, your season of finances never quits. It always blends into the next season that God has for you. It never quits. Now, a lot of people say, well, it's not my time or it's not my season. Well, yeah, your season should never, ever contradict with your next season. Your season should always move forward from one season to the next season. It should, there should not be a gap of saying, I'm quit this and I'm starting this. It always should blend into what God is doing into your future. Your job should blend to your promotions. Your job should teach you. Like my jobs I had brought me into ministry, and I'm still ministering a lot of things because of what I've done in my jobs. Able to touch hearts of people because of that. It blended. It didn't stop anything. It moved it forward. It was a training ground to, for a season. You know, some of you are going into a training ground for a season, and sometimes you don't like training, but the fact is it's going to blend you into blessing. It's going to get into the season of blessing. It's going to get into the season of breakthrough. It is in a season of that. Now, we have breakthrough at Let Go, Let God Ministry, but you know people that haven't had a breakthrough. Not everybody's going through the season of breakthrough, so you need to be ready for this message. is going to teach you how to be there for somebody to help them through their breakthrough. How many know that when we have a season, we can pass that season on? We can bless in that season. So if we have a breakthrough, we have to learn how to carry the breakthrough to our families and to our, our, our sphere of influence and to the people we need to break through. Now, these are prophecies that just came because I was just going to pray, but the Lord says, this is what I'm saying right now. Are we willing as a team here to go to the next level this coming Wednesday, a level that we have not seen before? We thought we'd seen great things, but you know what? So literally when I say that on Wednesday night and, and Friday, I'm still not satisfied. I want to see his fullness of everything he is for me, and that's I am going to have it in Christ Jesus because he's offered it to me. And he's offered it to you. We're not going to quit till we get it. We're going to push through and we're going to fight through. And we're going to see this breakthrough like never before. Everybody say, Holy Spirit, have your way here. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for everyone, Lord, and those people that are traveling today. Circumstances have arrived to families, Lord. We just bless those families, Lord. Help them through their lost ones and through their loved ones that have gone to the next realm. Lord, bless them. Lord, everyone that's feeling sick, if anybody's feeling kind of off, just raise your hand. 
In the name of Jesus, we just pray healing right now. Pray release right now. A complete release so they can hear the word of God in the name of Jesus. So that we can hear and that this word can go out into the world. And we pray for everyone out there in the name of Jesus. To be released in the anointing into the next realm, into a new dimension that is coming. Lord, we came back from Florida and we had a new dimension, but we're going to another dimension now. It doesn't stop. We're just moving from dimension to dimension. Lord, we're just going to higher levels with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, you want to go to another dimension. You know what? I don't want to live in the earthly dimension because it's just not fun. How many know earthly things are just not always fun? They last for a little while and then you either get in debt or you lose something and then it's not fun no more. But when you go into God's dimension, you get into higher anointings and higher levels and higher everything and there's always something to look forward to. And I want to go to those dimensions. I want you as a team to stand with me, you as a whole to stand with me. And I, I need your help to fight to that next dimension because I'm not satisfied. I want more of God. I want more healings. I want more miracles. I want more of everything that he has for me and you. The only reason I want more is so I can give more. The only reason I want the higher dimension is so I can bring it to you. To bring it to the world. To bring it to the nations. I want to be able to bring it to them. I want higher dimension, not for myself. I want, don't want to keep it for myself. I want to move forward. And I want to see people blessed out of their socks. And I want to see people going forward in the kingdom of God like never before. It is time for breakthrough. Never ever, like we often pray and say, God, when is breakthrough? I so rarely feel that this is a for sure and a definite. This is a definite. It's breakthrough time. It is a for sure time. Let's not make it a stillbirth. Let's not stop the very things. With breakthrough, there's noise. With breakthrough, there's breaking walls. With breakthrough, there's going to be garbage on your side that you're going to have to clean up. With breakthrough, you're going to have to clean up the rubble. Breakthrough makes a mess, but it blesses you greatly. It rebuilds. It builds up. It goes to the new levels. But don't just think breakthrough is a free thing. It is a thing that we have to continue and brew, um, walk in, and we can't lose heart in our breakthrough. That's what this message is about. Let not lose your heart as you walk through your breakthrough. As you see the rubble, as we don't understand everything, as we walk through these breakthroughs, we cannot lose heart. We cannot lose the very power. We have to war. It's time to war right now. War towards the prophecies that were related. These were powerful nights, and the Lord has released major words in the last couple nights. Major words. And we can't stop it, and we can't, we have to let it flow now to the next level. I saw, we've seen evidence. We've seen emails already from Friday night. There is already evidence of people, breakthrough. Jake himself said that he had a breakthrough. Like these breakthroughs are coming, and they're coming quickly and speedily. We noticed it last night already. By the end of the night, we saw a breakthrough. Breakthrough is coming quickly. It is speedy. God is not wasting time no more, but the fact is that he doesn't want us to waste his time either. He wants us to move forward into the new dimension. Let us not lose heart. Losing heart is, I'm going to speak on Galatians 6, 1 to 10, and that's the only scripture I have for today, unless if the Lord shows me something else. But I want to talk about the place of not losing heart. And if I just prophesy all morning, that's okay too. Because we're going to go forward. I want to leave here today excited for Wednesday. And for tomorrow and Tuesday, I want to be excited. I want to be excited. I, I come to the point of already on Friday night, I couldn't wait till the next move of God like that again. Like amazing, amazing power. And the passion that's flowing through me that I have no control over. I do have control over, but I want to let it out. It's just coming out like fire. I can't, I can't contain it no more. I have to let it out. It's excitement that is overwhelming in my life right now, what God is doing. And he's given me some for sure answers this last week. And one of them is for sure, is breakthrough. And why? Because you can't do it without his breakthrough and without his blessing in what we do. In any one of us. Your homes and everything we do. But there's prophecies to be war towards. You've got to listen to these videos again if you have to. Wednesday night, I mean starting last Sunday, Wednesday and um, Friday. You, you need to listen to all of them again if you have to. Because those were prophetic services. 
prophetic services to release the prophetic realm into the new dimension that we're going into this coming week. So we need to re-listen to it because we only got 10% of it. We got to hear the wholeness of it. And I need you to share it because this is not just for this church. This is because we are a ministry. We are an outreach. It is for everyone that we can touch. It's for everyone that we can touch. Galatians 6, 1 to 10. Are you with me, guys? Yeah. Amen. Brothers, if... Excuse me. Brothers, if a man overtakes, overtaken in any trans, sorry, trespass, sorry, I'll just read it again. Brothers, if any man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, looking out for yourselves, lest you be tempted. Excuse me for one second. powerful verse. Let's let, read it one more time. Brothers, if any man is overtaken in a transgra uh, transpass, I can't say it from somebody. Trespass. trespass. There you go. Thank you. Trespass. And this word trespass is if anyone is overtaken by offense, by sin, by a fall, by a fault, by being misled. If anybody is overtaken, now we all come to the place where we find ourselves in a fault, right? We've been overtaken in a place where we have been misled. We, and we even get offended sometimes. It says, any one of you, brothers, is overtaken. If any of you are overtaken by this problem, by this issue or offense, you who are spiritual, who are spiritual today? You who are spiritual, restore such a person in the spirit of gentleness. We need to restore. This word restore means this, to render, to mend what is broken to repair, to complete, to make him fit again, to equip them again, to put him in order again, to arrange him again, to adjust them again, to fit him, to frame him, to complete him. To, see, the thing is that we think we have a foundation of Jesus Christ, which we do, but we often build on the foundation our own ideas, and we get the wrong foundation. Jesus Christ is our foundation, but what do we build on Jesus Christ? Do we build our own ideas on Jesus Christ, or do we build his ideas so his foundation can be built? Now, the foundation is never leaves, but it's what we build on it that holds or that doesn't hold. It needs to be of Christ Jesus. So he says, restore such a person with gentle spirit, meaning this. Understand people that land in fault. Understand people that fall. Know that it's not a heart of everybody that is brothers and sisters in Christ. Know that you're going to meet people. While you're having a breakthrough, you're going to have to meet people that don't, are not having a breakthrough. And you can't go to them and say, oh, well, why are you not having it? God is doing this. You have to bring them through that place so they can receive the breakthrough that you're getting. The, the place that God is blessing you, you become the spiritual being that can release the blessing for anybody around you. He says, who, you who are spiritual, restore such a person. Now, restore doesn't mean that you have the position of a pastor here. It just means that you have the position to bring him into a place of restoration. You have a position to be and responsibility in your sphere of influence to direct and guide and witness to people in the right direction. We have that responsibility. I often see this, and I remember in my old times of churches too. We were so blessed in the church we were, but we would not dare to invite people to our church because we think they're not ready for such a power or such a service. It is time to open our mouths, and it is time to bring people to restoration so they can all, body of Christ, can receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit and receive the breakthrough together. Amen? It says, such a person with gentleness, looking out for yourselves lest you be tempted. Basically, he's saying this, if you're going to restore somebody, if you're going to walk in there, you better look out for yourself when you enter into somebody's life. Watch out what you're going to get connected to. Do not walk in there if there's temptation involved. Watch that you don't get yourself and don't lose your hope and lose your very place. Because what happens when people are, are in a place of sin or offense? It's very catchy. Wouldn't you agree? When somebody starts talking about somebody, you'll say, oh, I see what you're meaning. Be careful you don't lose your blessing that God has given you in the last four days. 
for services. Be careful you don't lose it and don't be tempted when you help someone else in their blessing. Because when they don't have their blessing yet, they have an offense or they have a fault or they have been misled or mis have a misdeed or they have something going on that they have to deal with. Wouldn't you agree? Let's be careful. But he says, walk in this place. Look into yourselves that lest you be tempted. Make sure that you're ready to do what it takes to help people. Don't lose heart in what God is doing in your life. But at the same time, don't let somebody else take away what God is doing in your life. Because when we go to the people that need our help, a lot of them will take away the very essence that we just got. They will come against religiously. They will come against with their opinion. They come against with whatever, and they will take away the very anointing that we've been receiving here for the last few services, and if not more services. And I'm just talking about the last few because it was a prophetic word for four services. You have to understand that everybody that will talk to you that doesn't understand it, that wasn't here, will try to grab away, and you will be tempted to remove yourself from it and be review the whole situation of what God is doing because it is such a supernatural circumstance that we are walking in that naturally it would be taken away. Let's not be tempted. Verse 2, it says, bear one another's burdens. It says, bear one another's trouble. And those be fulfilled in the law of Christ, which means to be fulfilled in the establishment of Jesus Christ. Whatever, it's all talking about the same thing. We have to remember to connect all these verses together, otherwise we will be misled in this scripture. It's talking about brothers that are overtaken by trespasses, people that are in faults. It's talking about people that are in trouble, people that are in need. That's what it's talking about here. We're talking about even we might be in need, and we might have be those people within those burdens or those offenses. It says, bear one another's burdens, which means bear one another's troubles, and let them fulfill the establishment of Christ within you, the law of Christ in you. Meaning that when you are helping these person, don't be tempted, but bring them back to the establishment of Jesus Christ. Bring him back to the foundation. Bring him back to the wholeness. Bring him back into the healing power. Bring him back into that place. When you carry one another's burden, this word burden means to carry one person to sustain, to uphold, to support. It's to bear away or take off a person. It's not to take it on. So when you bear one another's person, if somebody here has a problem, I come beside them and I do not take over the burden I helped them carry the burden off of them. And so if you can't do it, the, then you need to find a place that can do it. And it's talking about the body of Christ. We have to choose to work as Christ Jesus. And Jesus says that we are the body of Christ. Okay, I need you guys to pull a little bit more. Bear one another's burdens. Carry it off with one another. When somebody's in trouble, understand. Don't speak against. Guide them, lead them, so they can have a breakthrough. So that we can walk in a breakthrough together as a whole, not as individual. We can't lose our heart in what God is doing because you know what? One of us will get discouraged, most likely. And when we get discouraged while that breakthrough is happening, you need to lean on somebody else that can help you get back to the breakthrough. Back to the blessing. Because sometimes we don't understand, and in most cases, don't understand why things don't happen as fast as they do. Or understand why they're not happening yet. But the word is a ma matter of fact. It's not if or when, but it's a matter of fact. And we have to choose to take the matter of fact of it, the promise of it. Verse 3 says this, For if anyone thinks that he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Sometimes we come to the place of being so highly thought of. If anybody thinks he is nothing, is something, oh sorry, is something, he is nothing. We have to take ourselves out of it completely and know that without Christ Jesus, we are nothing. We are something with Christ Jesus because we're designed to be with him. We're designed, our human nature, our human nature is not designed to be without Christ Jesus. We ourselves are not designed to be without God. So as soon as we remove our God out of it, our Jesus out of it, our salvation out of it, we are absolutely nothing for that reason because it's we are not designed to be without him. We are designed to hold fast to who we are. And as soon as we take our own credit, and as soon as we don't relate to the Father and to the family of God no more, we become nothing. We become a nobody. And it's been proven over and over again that 
without Christ Jesus, that we become a nobody sometimes. We feel like a nobody sometimes. We have to walk into this place and knowing. But just remember, he deceives himself when he thinks he is something without God. And the word deceive means this. It's to deceive anyone's mind from one's mind. It's, the, it's in the mindset. It's in your reasoning. You deceive yourself by what you think or by what you say. That's how you reason it away. And so you have to understand the reasoning comes in the mind. How many would agree? When you think you're something, if you think, the word think means here. <laughs> and your thinking takes action sometimes. And it takes actions that hurt people and actions that break, uh, allow people not to have the breakthrough they need. Choose to be this person that comes in the spirit of gentleness. I want this, this revival and this breakthrough that we're having. <coughs> we need to choose to walk in gentleness right now. Because a lot of people will come at us, and if we think more highly than they are, and as soon as we make ourselves more important, they are going to turn away from us. As soon as we say we have something they don't have, and we try to, any kind of place, if we don't come in gentleness, people will not grab a hold of what God is doing here. We need to go in there with gentleness and bring the love of Christ on that they will want to come into the presence of God. I have, I've been doing a lot of research and talking to a lot of people, and so when I say that, I don't want you to put faces to it because I'm just all over doing things right now. And one thing is that when people st say things that are hurtful or because they're hurt, they, they protect and say that this is the only right church, this is the only good church. As soon as you say that, you lost the people coming here. You need to come in gentlemen and say, I understand where you're at and I want to bless you where you're at. And then when we can share what God is doing here, people will connect to what God is doing here and people will join us in that. Are you with me? To me, this is a very important message, and I would pray that you would grab a hold of the revelation that I'm trying to bring through. I want to bring through what the Lord showed me this morning, that this is a foundation message of everything that's happened. If we can bring this into our foundation and bring Jesus Christ and to be ready to be coming, because what, why am I saying this message? It's because people are going to come in here that won't have the breakthrough that you had yet. People are going to come here that didn't get healed like you had yet. People are going to come here that are not delivered like you are delivered yet. And if you're not ready to carry the burdens and love on these people, and carrying burdens mean, doesn't mean that you're going to do all the deliverance. It just means they're there to help carry. You're here, they're there to help direct and bring it off of them. We're there as a team, bringing them together to bring freedom. Be ready because what, after what has happened on Wednesday night and Friday night, people will come because they want that. People will come because now they're going to be curious. And what we need to do is we need to keep the power of God flowing in this concept of foundation so that it cannot be broken, but people will keep coming and being be set free and keep going forward in the miracles. And there's a great anointing that's been happening lately in the last couple of nights that we had, and it's called the Raised Dead Anointing the Lord has been showing me. Huge power that's happening. Raising Dead Anointing. When I feel that coming on, it is something I, I haven't felt ever. I don't think I ever had that kind of experience of raising dead anointing. Like, that is just wild, I'm telling you. And it's that, that's what's bringing it. It's, it's just a huge anointing. And the Lord wants to wake up every muscle in our body. The Lord wants to wake up every nerve, every cell, everything. He wants to raise it up again. And He wants to bring His Christians right to the fullest again, like never before. Raising dead anointing. It's that strong that it would raise people from the dead. But you know what? When a muscle is crippled and when they're dead, that muscle is dead. And God's going to rise it up again. And that's called a miracle. It's called a creative miracle that God is going to do. And he's going to release the nerves in your bodies. He's going to release the thinking rate. He's going to release the serotonin levels. He's going to release. It's going to be waking up every part of you and every part of your body that's going to wake up. That is a waking dead anointing. How many of you sometimes just hear, hey, if my mind was just clear that I could think straight. That needs a waking dead anointing so you can wake up again into the presence of God and know that our God says something that's going to happen and to know that we can connect to that when he says so and that when, when he says heal, that we can see healing. When he says save, that we will say saving. When we, when we see financial freedom, when, when he says it, we will get it. But we need to wake up and be able to receive it to the fullest again. We can't become so stale in it. We can't become so 
Oh, man, I've been trying so hard. No, you've got to grab a hold, and we've got to wake up like a new and say, yes, he is that God. There's enough ministers out there and enough people out there that experience it and it works for them. And it can work for here too and it can work for you too just like out there. There's many anointed people out there that are being very blessed right now because of God's anointing. So we've got to grab it together and see the fullness of God. Waking dead anointing. Let's wake up in His presence. Let's wake up and see the fullness of it. The fire of God brings people together. His presence brings people together. Yes, teaching is great, the word is great, but without the presence of God, it doesn't bring people together. People don't want religion. They want relationship. They want to feel God's love to the fullest. We don't, they don't want to say, oh, I don't want to be a Christian like that. They want to say, yes, I want to be a Christian like that. He's not perfect, but I like what he has. <laughs> he makes a lot of mistakes, but I still like what he has. That's how people should be talking, amen? In verse 4, no, no, verse, yeah, verse 4. But let each person examine, which means discern his own work, deed, which means your deed. It's not talking about a supernatural work, it's talking about your deed. And if, and when we will have, and then he will have boasting, which means rejoicing in himself alone, and not in uh, the other. Now, I'm going to explain, we're going to read verse 5 and explain what this means, in my, what I'm getting out of it anyway. For each one shall bear his own load. First it says, bear one another's load. Now it's saying, bear his, each his own load. Verse 4, let each person examine. Meaning this, if you come and get help from somebody, and you're going to get your burden released, or somebody's going to come to you, you can't take the burden off there. They have to examine themselves, and they've got to see their own problem, so they can rejoice that the Lord has saved them, and has delivered them, so now they have the rejoicing that the, his, their own burden has been lifted. See, the thing is that what we do is that we rely on people to the point where if we, if we don't have that, then we don't have freedom. We need people to have freedom, but we have to realize that we have to deal or do our part. If we don't do our part, we're not going to get free. Too many people think they're going to be free by just simply coming up for one prayer. It's not going to work. It never has and never will. What works is when you come up for prayer and choose to walk in freedom, that's what works. When you choose to take it on yourself and say, I am choosing to rejoice that I am free. I'm not going to look at everybody else and see how they're doing, but I'm going to look at myself and say, God is creating me this way, and I'm rejoicing that he's setting me free. Amen? Amen. He says, discern your own work. I mean, look at what you do. Look at your fruit. Look at what you're walking through. And if it's not good, stop doing what you're doing. It is good. Start walking in it more. Look at it. Discern what you are working on. Discern what you're doing. And if you're doing that is not in value and it is not in God's will, we need to stop. And we need to continue. It says, and when he will boast then, and he will, which is the same word in rejoicing in King James, in himself alone and not in any other. Each, for each person should bear his own load. And this own load means this. You got to do your part. Each person it's helping you, but I'm not going to take a load for you and carry it on me, but I'm going to help you with your load. You're carrying your load, and I'm going to deal with your load. I'm going to help you bring it off of you, but you have to choose to do your part and carry your load and to the cross. You have to carry it to where God can take care of it. You've got to release it where God can release it with you. You've got to choose to come to the ministry where you can, people can be freed from it. You have to choose to carry your load to the point where God can deliver you. You can't sit at home with a load and sit there and, and say, nobody cares. You've got to get it up, put it on your shoulders if you have to, and carry it to the cross. And where is the cross? The cross is in the family of God and Christ Jesus. And Jesus says, I'm the head and the church is the body of Christ. So the cross is at the church. The cross is where people can release the giftings to help you. By, no, we can only be helped by people that God has ordained to be helped by. And it says, then you will... Lift up your own load. And I love that. Carry your own load. Choose not to put it on and blame everybody else all the time. You are here too often. That guy must have done that. Or this guy. That guy. Blame shifting comes on. He says, no. Take responsibility and I will help you. Take responsibility and I will help that load. Yeah, some things you're going through, it's not your fault. I realize that. But the fact is it's on you and you need to carry it off of you. And you need to choose to let the Lord carry it. Amen. Verse 6. 
let him who is taught, so he's talking about the people that are being helped right now. He's talking about we're helping the person deal with his offenses. We're helping the person carry their burdens off. We're helping them. And he says, let each one who is taught, which means who's instructed. So now, when, how do you know when you come for healing or when you help somebody, you instruct them how to get free? You become an instructor. You become a teacher to them of some sort, right? You're teaching them. You're guiding them. You're telling them what to do almost. And some people... <laughs> have a hard time with that. But you're almost telling them what to do. Now you need to do this, you need to do that. How many of you ever been there? You kind of give them direction, you kind of give them advice, you kind of tell them to go where, okay? Now listen to it. You have to remember all the other verses I read for this verse. Let him who is taught, which is instructed, the word to share in all good things with him who teaches. Means that make sure now that when you do things, that you share the things that you're doing as your freedom, as what you do. Now you share with the person that's helping you. You keep the connection of healing. You keep the connection of freedom. You do follow-up. You keep working on it. You keep walking in it. This word shares means this. It's to come into communion and fellowship with. To become a sharer or become a partner with. Now you, because somebody's helped you, you partner up with that person and you choose to partner with them so that you can see full freedom. You don't do a one-time thing, but you partner up with a ministry. You partner up with it, even if you don't go to church, but you're partnering up with them because they set you free. Now you become a part of that very essence of who has helped you. Now there's all kinds of world. When people partner with people for one reason, it's because it's done something for them. And the Lord says, you need to now partner up. Do you want your full healing? I'm talking to the people on video everywhere. You want your full healing? You better start blessing the people that help you. You better start partnering up with some of these people that are blessing you. Because if you don't, you're going to lose the very burden that's been lifted off of you because the Lord has instructed you to do, share with all good things to the one that's lifting the burdens off for you. He's instructed us. And this word, become a partner to enter into the fellowship, even sometimes to join the place. People join. Often when people have been set free, they join the ministry, don't they? With either partnership or somehow they join it. All of a sudden, they've been blessed by a word or even televangelists, whatever. They've been blessed and they start becoming partners, don't they? It is a place of when somebody's been blessed and somebody's been helped. And here, I'm the teacher, for instance, for example, and if you've been taught, you're, people are sharing the good things that are happening. And when you share, it's becoming a partner with what is happening. So if we become a partner together in Christ Jesus and we see your freedom because we partner together and where you cannot be broken and you cannot lose that way. Not just financially, but spiritually. We partner up to see the freedom together. Amen? So the one that can help carry the burden, that's who you're talking to. Every one of us has friends that helps us. Everyone else has pastors that help us. We have churches, ministries that help us. Choose to partner up. Choose to be a sharer of good things. And also you're keeping yourself accountable when you share to the teacher that teaches you. So now let's say when I help you off a burden, you've been struggling and also you've been free. And if you share that freedom, you're testifying now. You're breaking force, the force that could be broken. It cannot be broken. You teach. Make sure you share the good things that God's done in your life because of what was done there. So if I pray healing for you, I want to hear about it because the Bible says you should share it to me if there's something good that happened. He doesn't even talk about negativity. He didn't say about sharing all the negativity here. He said, share all good things that are happening to the one that teaches you. <coughs> Verse 7. Do not be deceived. It means don't wander, don't go astray. God is not mocked. For every man, and still talking about partnership there, just remember verse 6, and now it's talking verse 7. Do not be deceived. Don't, be, don't wander away from what God is doing. Because he started with you, don't wander away from it. When he's taking your burden off, don't lose your heart because he started with you. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't wander because God is not mocked. For when a man sows, this also he will reap. He's talking about, now I told you to share all good things. You better start sowing those good things so you can continue your freedom. When God's done something good for you, share the good. So that the good can become, your pattern can become your fruit instead of your burden. Now, when we walk in this place, that word, we shall sow, we shall reap. That's the, the harvest. It will come now. In verse 8, for he who sows to the flesh from his own flesh will reap cor corruption. But he who sows the spirit will 
from the Spirit reap everlasting life. Be careful what you sow. You are going to reap. People say, I am sorry I did that. Lord, I, I, I goofed up. I did this or I did that. The fact is he forgives you, but there's still a reaping involved. He will reap what he sows. The best way is to put some roundup on that what you sowed so you can kill it off sooner the better. But the fact is you can't kill it until it shows up. You can't kill something until it shows up, meaning that be ready when you know you did something bad in your past. And when it shows up, you better be ready to enter heal instantly when it shows up. Because that's the only way. When I go to a farmer's field, if the seed's down, roundup doesn't help me nothing. It only helps when the seed is up, when it's starting to grow. Then it kills. And the same thing with God's kingdom. He always used parables of farmers. If you want your life, as soon as something shows up from your past, say, I thought I dealt with it. No, it hasn't nurtured yet because if you would have seen it and when you see it, you need to kill it. You need to kill the thing that is bothering you. Sometimes we kind of wait and wait until it grows bigger and the bigger it is, it's harder to kill. The biggest thing is this, is when I kill something when it's this small compared to when it's this big, when I kill it this small, I don't have extra shaft. When I kill it this big, there's a lot of garbage. A lot of shaft to be burnt up. Praise God, if it's this small, I don't have to kill a shaft. It's just gone. See, the thing is, what we do is we wait, and then we have to deal with all the garbage around us because the shaft is around us. We killed it, but still the weeds are still there. It's dead weed, but it's still garbage that has to be cleaned up so we can sow good ground. So we can sow something good. We still have to clean it up. I hope you're grabbing hold of that. Verse 8. says, For he who so oh, I just said that, for he sows. But why not grow, flow in the Spirit? Why not sow in the Spirit? Why not choose to hear God's voice and you hear His purpose and everlasting life? We, everlasting life means the life that is real and wonderful for you. Life is that is meant for you. Wholeness that is meant for you. Health, spirit, soul, and body. Everything that's meant for you. I want you to be ready and to be established for when these people come in. And if you're one of these people, choose to grab a hold of that help. But overall, you need to be ready for these kind of people. They're good people. We've been there all. And we're still there in some areas maybe. But we need to be delivered and we need to be ready to see deliverance and healing on these people that come in. Verse 9. For a while we do good. <laughs> For a while we do good. Let us not lose heart. While we do good, sorry. Let's not lose heart. See, the thing is, while we're doing good, and then if we lose heart while we're doing good, that's when we crumble. We need to keep our heart, meaning that we... We keep ourselves pure while we're doing good. Maybe finances is rolling in now and we're feeling good now. This is when we serve God higher and more than ever. We do not lose heart. We keep pushing now. This is the time to push while we're doing good. This is the time to go all the way. And this is the time for breakthrough while we're doing good. How many you understand? We can't lose heart now. It doesn't matter what we see around us. If we're doing good, we've got to push harder than ever. We've got to push more than we did when we're doing bad. Because when you're bad, you can't push anyway very good. But when you're doing good, you can go many miles. When you do good, that one word that came, we can get onto the dry land and we can just run and run and run to the next level and next dimension. We can do good, don't lose heart. This is a time not to sit back. This is a time to run. This is a time to move forward like never before. This is not a time to say, oh, good, that is done. Now I'm just going to do good for all. No. When you're doing good, you've got to not lose heart. You've got to run and run and push and push and see God's glory deeper and deeper. This is a time to go deep with Him. This is a time to go to the next level with Him. This is a time to go to the next dimension with Him. This is a time to move and move and move to the next level of what God has for you. I do better when I'm doing good. I can go higher places when I'm doing good. But we don't get that sometimes because when we're doing good, we're enjoying the good too much and not moving forward. Allow the good in you as you move forward. And you're going to be a blessing for many people around you when you do that. Amen? He says, while you do good, uh, let us not lose heart. For, this, for the due season, we shall reap. And so, and if we do not become weary. So there's a condition attached to that. So he says, do not lose heart because you shall reap if you do good. Meaning that you've got to move forward to harvest. The breakthrough happened. Now let's harvest the breakthrough. Let's walk forward so we can see the breakthrough. Let's not just sit there and say, okay, the breakthrough happened. You've got to walk through the wall that you just broke through. 
You gotta walk to the next level. You gotta grab a hold of the Canaan, whatever, the land of riches now. You gotta maybe slay a couple um, giants to get it. But overall, you still have to walk through it and you gotta walk to the promised land. And if you don't walk to the promised land, just like the times of Moses, if they didn't walk there, they didn't get it, and they stuck and were in fear for 40 years. Don't be in fear right now. Walk into your promised land. How many of you had a breakthrough, you believe? How many of you believe by confession of faith that you had a breakthrough? Okay, if you had that, get into the promised land. There are some giants in there. There are some people that you might not agree with in there. There's maybe some people that come against you in there, but you can fight them and you will win them because that is your promised land that God has given you. Do not lose heart. In essence, we've been promised this many years ago, but we've been waiting sometimes. We don't know sometimes how to go into the promised land because we don't know how to fight sometimes. We don't know the right battle. We don't know the right thing to do. But now we have it. It's broken through. Amen? But he says, it shall reap in due time, but if you don't become weary. What does weary mean? As long as you don't become utterly spiritless. Don't become religion. Don't become in a place of saying this is the way it always has to happen. Don't be spiritualist. Or to be worried or to be exhausted. Don't become exhausted. Don't become weary and don't become, don't release, don't let the spirit of God that is within you in the last couple of weeks or last couple of services, don't let that spirit of God leave you. Don't become spiritless. You need the very power that we have to run into the promised land. You need it. You can't go without it. Don't become spiritless. Come excited and stay within it and walk with it. Are you with me? Verse 10, the last verse. So then, as we have opportunity, how many of you want an opportunity? We have opportunity. It doesn't even say maybe. It says we have opportunity. So then, we, as we have opportunity, let us walk, uh, sorry, work. Let us work what is good toward all. I'll just read that again in a little bit more smoother roll. So then, as we have opportunity, let us work what is good toward all, but especially toward those who are in the household of faith. I love it. He says, now because you've been healed, you've been delivered, you've been set free, you have it all now. He says, now I want you to take the opportunity that I have for you. I have opportunity for you to work and do good among all people, but especially the brothers and sisters in Christ. You know what? Christians speak against Christians the most. When I meet people out there, when the world is there, people look at non-saved as they bless them more than me. <laughs> That's how we feel sometimes, right? It actually happens sometimes. When Christians, the Bible, but Jesus says, uh, now that you've been free, I want you to bless the household of faith the most. I want you to do everybody, but make, don't you dare forget about the people that were beside you. Don't dare forget about the people that had faith for you. Don't forget about the people that stood in the gap for you. Don't forget about the people that helped you be delivered and set free. Don't forget about them. 